Hey guys, and welcome back to Brisket Medic. We're out here in uh, my outdoor kitchen-ish. Uh, it's really not an outdoor kitchen compared to uh, Matt Pittman's over at Meat Church, but it's what I got for now. Anyways, we're outside. It is 22 degrees. The wind's blowing, of course, because of where we're at in Texas. But I wanted to go ahead and do a brisket cook on uh, my Pecos with some updated modifications that I've done. I uh, tried to move some of the uh, plates around a little bit. Uh, the deflector played around a little bit, make some modifications to that. I'll give you an update on what I have found works best for the current setup. And I uh, added a couple of thermometers to the front. I picked this up at Academy. Uh, it was pretty cheap. It was under 20 bucks. I think it was $14. Uh, but I think uh, it'll fit in there if I bend these handles up. And it will give me uh, a good size for the ashes to fall through, but not necessarily the coals uh, to be lost during the cook. And I think that'll help with our fire management uh, and containment that we're having. But uh, let's go ahead and get a fire started. Uh, I'll show you the, the temperature gauges um, that I put in there and uh, what I plan on doing with the existing hole from the old gauge. Come on over. Let's start off by showing you, I did take the gauge out of the top here. Um, and um, I'm either gonna plug this or use something like a wine bottle cork for external probes. But for now, I just use a little bit of foil crumbled up to plug that hole. I know it's not gonna hold temperature very well, but it is what it is. But I went ahead and I came up above grate level about an inch, inch and a half and put these gauges in. Now this one is so far over because I'm not gonna be cooking anything over here. Um, nobody is, that's generally where a water pan is. And let's face it, every grill has to have some sort of hot spot um, because of the nature of an offset where the heat comes in, obviously is gonna be hotter. So we scooted it over to the beginning of our cooking section. And obviously I put one in over here just to see the temperature variances from side to side. As you can see, it's very cold out here. I think it's 22 degrees with 20 mile an hour winds and uh, I'm kind of miserable. But something else that we did, um, if we can even see it, um, I took out, I made some modifications to the baffle plate. Now, um, I cut it off initially and then turned it the other way around um, to where it kind of sat in, to where it ramped the heat up, kind of like a jambo. And um, on a cooker this size, that proved to be extremely um, not great. It, turned, it proved to be a bad idea. So um, what I did was I put it back the same direction it was, but I scooted it over some, and that actually did a really good job. Uh, left enough room here for a, a water pan. I'm not welding it back in place yet because I don't think I'm done modifying the smoker because I, I believe that there's some more work that can be done for the exhaust and this intake here to make it more efficient and effective. So I'm going to go ahead and place it in. It's, it's roughly six, six to eight inches from this firewall to the edge of the baffle. And that proved to be really good, uh, about five degrees difference from side to side. Um, but also the biggest and the main thing is um, from factory, this cooks from the bottom side up. And then when you take it off, it cooks from the top side down. And I really want some even cooking. And that's my goal with this smoker is to have a nice even flow. Now, clearly the heat, the hot uh, air is going to be uh, more prone to rise up. So it's going to be a little bit more hotter on top. But if I can allow it to cook more evenly, allowing that heat to go above and below the grates at the same time, that would be very expedient. So that's where that's at. I'm going to go ahead and put our new stainless steel tray into the firebox and get a fire started. This actually worked out perfectly. Um, <laughs> the door closes uh, without touching the handle. Uh, it's all the way to the back of the smoker. It's got good airflow underneath it. Um, I think this is going to work out. So I'm going to go ahead and get a chimney lip and dump some charcoal, uh, some lump coal on there and get some log split and get this fire going.
Now we've already got our prime brisket from HEB trimmed up. We just did a simple backyard trim, concentrating on shape, saturation, and silver skin. Nothing too fancy. It's just for the house. And then we uh, coated it liberally with hardcore carnivore black. Now I, I've been a little bit trepidatious to use this seasoning because I literally thought it was just charcoal for a fake bark. But I tasted it and it's got amazing flavor. So I wanna see how it does on this brisket. It's sitting up on the counter, sweating out a little bit. As soon as this is up to temp, we'll throw it on there. Let it smoke for about three hours before we leave and look at it. Keep the fire going. Keep our fire right around between 250 and 275. And uh, that's about it. I mean, three hours, we'll spritz it. Check on it every hour after that. When it needs to be wrapped, we'll wrap it up in some paper and finish it off. See how this thing does. All right, folks, uh, it's time to add some fuel to the fire. I let it dip down a little bit low. The snow is falling down and uh, <laughs> it's cooling off a lot faster than I thought. But we're gonna go ahead and take a look in here. It started snowing about 30, 45 minutes ago. So I did start putting the wood in to the firebox. The brisket is looking really nice. Very moist on the outside. That hardcore carnivore, um, amazing color. Uh, absolutely amazing. I'm actually not going to spritz it yet, even though it's been three hours. It's nice and moist. I'm just going to keep feeding the fire. This thing has been running really well, uh, very even. Uh, within five, sometimes 10 degrees if the fire drops down too low, um, but uh, pretty even. Very impressed with it so far. I'm also impressed with that stainless steel grate. I'll, uh, I'll take you over there and let you see how good it's holding coals and keeping the ashes fell down beneath it. But uh, other than that, we're just gonna check on it every hour, spritz it till it's time to wrap, finish it up for you. All right, guys, we pulled our brisket out and it cooked for eight hours. I put it in the electric smoker to uh, control cool for a couple hours. So all together, it's been cooking and resting together for about 11 hours now. So I pulled it out of the smoker after it was probe tender. It was at 202 degrees internal. I threw it in the electric smoker at 155 degrees just to hold it there for a couple of hours until I was ready to slice it. So let's go ahead and take a look at it and see how well this smoker did. Now remember, we moved our baffle plate over about six inches. We added the uh, Outdoor Gourmet stainless steel grill tray 
into our firebox to contain the coals and the ashes and it did an absolutely fantastic job. Um, we maintained temperatures from about five degrees from side to side on the old country Pecos and uh, I mean in spite of it being uh, under 20 degrees in the teens and dropping with 20 mile an hour winds. So let's go ahead and get this sliced open and see how it looks. I can't wait to taste this hardcore carnivore um, seasoning because it tastes pretty good just on my finger. Oh, that bark looks absolutely amazing. These prime briskets from HEB are fantastic. It feels good in my hand. So much au jus. I'm not going to pour a ton on there. I mean, look how Look how glistening that is. No tallow needed. <laughs> Let's go ahead and slice into it, folks. Oh, man. Like butter. Such a beautiful brisket. Man. I love it. Beautiful, beautiful brisket. Let's try this pull test. Beautiful. Mm. I cut that pretty thick too. Oh. Oh, it's got great flavor. I like that. Hardcore carnivore, good flavor, amazing bark. I mean, obviously, with the charcoal in it. I don't know if you can see if the lighting is good enough for you to see that uh, smoke ring or not, but great little smoke ring on it. Good flavor, just a clean flavor. Mm. Even without modifications, the Old Country Smoker is an amazing smoker, Pecos or the Brazos, especially if... Like a majority of backyard guys that cook like 15 briskets a year without modifications it works just fine um, with them it works even better so try these out guys if you want to super cheap it was 15 bucks for that tray and it doesn't cost anything to cut and drill holes for your baffle so i love you guys make sure you hit like you hit subscribe we're almost to a thousand i appreciate you i love you drink more water and stay warm